Hi, Outlaw Bookseller, Stephen E. Andrews here again. Well, I'll admit it's a fair cop. I've been shirking my duties. People have been asking about it and I haven't been doing it. Um, so you've got me fair and square. What am I talking about? Who knows? I'm actually talking about crime fiction. And um, I'm very aware I hadn't really posted any crime stuff on, on the channel yet. And that's because I haven't read a lot of crime recently. I've read loads in the last 10 years. I read a lot in the um, mid to late 80s, early 90s, then sort of moved away from the genre for a while, keep sticking with a couple of favourites. Got really, really back into it around about 2010, focusing on Italian crime fiction, which I really, really love. I'll talk about that in, at enormous length at some point. And because I've been reading much, I'm not feeling it at the moment. So I'm going to cheat slightly and I'm going to cheat through the medium of a little subgenre, um, which is absolutely tiny. It's a subgenre which the writer I'm going to talk about made all his own. Let's just check the chair height. That's better. Gosh, that was scary, wasn't it? And you're probably wondering why there's a Beach Boys um, album in the background. Um, the 20 Golden Greats, which I first bought, I think, in 1978. I'm not a massive Beach Boys fan, though I do love the famous stuff. That's a blue vinyl copy. I'll show it to you one day. We'll, we'll talk about it. So I was going to wear my Paul and Shark t-shirt, an Italian yachting t-shirt, but I had to move so many books over the other side of the room <laughs> to get at the, um, the author's works, the author I want to talk about, that I just completely covered up um, a really useful box I've got with all sorts of um, trendy Italian clothing and he said laugh at me but I'll show you this is my Paul and Sharp membership card so you know I am the real thing I am a member of the international yachting community and if you believe that you will believe anything so um, talking about a writer called Kem Nunn now that's Kem K-E-M not Ken Kem Nunn and um, this is a sublime novel called Tapping the Source. Two of my friends read this years and years and years before my read about five, six years ago, I think. And I finally got to get, getting a copy. When I bought this American trade, this is Simon Schuster trade in the USA. It's bigger than a B format. Um, it was out of print in the UK. It's back in print now from the wonderful No Exit Press, thanks to Eon Mills, who's done a great job there over about 30 years, publishing some of the best international crime writing that we can get in the UK. This is Tapping the Source, and it's Surf Noir. The hell is Surf Noir, I hear you say? Well, let me just say, this is Sui Jean Works. There are no other books like this. There are similar books, yes. One similar book is The Sea on Fire by Howard Cunnell, which I mentioned the other day. This is the third time I've mentioned this book since the channel started mere seconds ago. And until you all go out and buy it and read it, I'm going to keep plugging it, because Howard is influenced by Ken, and, um, you know, there is a certain affinity. So Tapping the Source is the story of a young man whose sister goes missing. He and his sister live at a gas station in the desert with their aunt and uncle. Their parents are dead. And one day his sister goes off with some guys in the car. And the novel begins a few, few weeks later. And he's pumping gas and a sleek automobile pulls up. I seem to remember it's white. Chap gets out and says, you can find your sister here and gives him an address in Huntington Beach, California. Now, anybody who's ever been to a branch of Hollister will know that Huntington Beach, of course, is a big centre for surfing in, um, in California. And the protagonist of the novel then goes off to California to the address to find the sister. He falls in with the surfers. He does some surfing. Um, and there's some really strange stuff in it, bikers, cults, what have you. But there's some absolutely incandescent writing about surfing. It's not something I'd ever do. I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, but it really, really is spectacular. So if you've got any friends who like surfing in the sea, then this is just fantastic, lyrical, beautiful, glittering. And... I can't really say enough good about it, tapping the source. So it's one for you crime readers. And I know it sounds absurd, so from what, but it, it's brilliant. And it's also one for anybody who likes the sea and extreme sports and that sort of thing. So it's got a very broad appeal. So I really recommend tapping the source. It's one of the best novels I've read this century. I read it really quickly. And it has the energy, raw pace and 
drive of the best genre novels that the prose quality of the finest american writing and somebody i would prepare compare um ken to is um Cormac McCarthy. I mean, Cormac McCarthy, you probably know, it's very famous. And this is one of Ken's other books. Tapping the Source was his first novel. I think this is his second or third. And this is Tawana Straits. And this is a no exit hardcover. This is a limited edition. And this, to me, um, in its plot is rather like No Country for Old Men. Well, I think this was written first. The same sort of themes but the writing, in my view, is actually better. I find No Country for All Men very too stripped down. You know what Cormac McCarthy's like? He can be very biblical in his style. He can be very, very terse, and he can be somewhere in between. And I think his best writing is the in-between stuff, like The Road, though the biblical stuff, um, like the Western, Blood Meridian, is um, is superb as well. But No Country for All Men is is very, very clipped. And I always get the feeling if, if somebody had submitted that to a publisher and they were already famous, it wouldn't have happened. So it has a similar similar plot to this, to Tijuana Straits. So do pick this up as well. And this is absolutely fantastic. There's a lot in there about nature, um, women under threat, and a guy who tries to do his best. There's this seaside scenes. And it really is an exciting thriller. Um, this is a signed numbered limited edition, number 33 of a thousand and I picked this up um, from a dealer probably on ABE books only a few years ago and I think it was only about 10 quid I don't know if they're still out there so if you can get it do it's really really good um, there's another novel by him called Dogs of Winter which also is a surf noir novel that's not bad either um, this is probably his best written book of the ones I've read though Tapping the Souls does have a favourite sort of place in my heart so I've got one here which I bought very recently which I haven't read which I think is a second novel, Unassigned Territory, and that's a um, that's published by Dover, which is strange. I never associate Dover with, with contemporary writing, and um, I will read this sometime later this year, I think, because it's been a while since I've read any of Ken's works. He did a book called Chance a couple of years ago, which there was a TV series or film, and I think um, Hugh Laurie was in it, and Howard Cunnell said to me, um, that it was crap, it was no good, and um, and I do really respect talent, so it's rather put me off, but I'll give it a try at some point. So that's my first crime foray. I'm sorry it's a slightly compromised one, but I do like to push the envelope and go for unusual things. This is a one-off if you like books like M. John Harrison's Climbers, if you like The Sea on Fire, if you like anything about extreme sports, this is absolutely a marvellous book. And, you know, you can taste the salt and all that stuff. It's um, it's like shooting the tomb and falling off into a, um, a big walled one. So Tapping the Salt by Kem Nunn. No exit press in the UK. Get it. And remember, everybody's gone surfing. Surfing USA. <laughs>